30 0. So, of course, it's a nice, beautiful day in Lewisburg. It's actually pretty atypical for this place. It's pretty gray and miserable usually. And that means that there's hardly any good reason to be here. I mean, why would you ever want to be suffering in the rain and cold? But trust me, I had a very good reason to be here. So I actually came from Paris, France, from a nice family. Uh, we had a book finding shop. So Perfect timing. So I came from France. I had a book binding shop with my family. We might have been lower class, but it was a rel relatively good life for lower classmen. Of course, to be in the upper class, the nobility, you have to be born into it. And 90% of the French population was nowhere near that. There was only a few families that really controlled the entire country. So I couldn't have that life. But still, I was living pretty well until one fateful day when my bookbinding shop burned down and it took my family with it. So I was left with nothing. I had no livelihood, no family of course, and most importantly, no money. So I took whatever scraps I had left and I almost drank myself to death, to be honest. I went down to the tavern. But like an angel from the heavens, a recruitment officer managed to find me. And he tempted me with an offer I could really not not refuse. See, he talked about a place overseas called Louis Boule in the New World, uh, the colony of Ile Royale. It's one of the uh, one of the islands off the coast of uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, the British actually took Nova Scotia from the French a few years earlier in uh, 1713. It used to be called Acadie or Acadia. And now Ile Royale is all we had left. And they built a fortress there, that is uh, this place, the Fortress of Lewisburg. And I was told that there was a great day here, and that there was lots of women and great weather. And that's only half true, really. And since I was under the influence, I could hardly say no. So the next day, I boarded a ship and started my four-week voyage overseas. And I ended up here. I got assigned to what's called the Compagnie Franche de la Marine. It's an infantry company. Technically, we're Marines. Uh, we're under the naval command. But in reality, it's uh, not like we've ever seen naval combat. We've, in fact, never seen combat in general. So, um, practically like a police force, a glorified police force. But anyway, I came here in the middle of winter. And the first thing I noticed is that I got assigned all my gear. I should say issued all my gear except for one crucial piece, my overcoat. See, this thing is pretty important. Um, I'm going to freeze to death in the wintertime if I don't have it. And since they only issue it on off years, which, was, which I unfortunately didn't come here in, I had to buy it myself. And that put me into debt. And debt's a pretty bad thing considering that if you ever go into debt, you're probably going to have to do six years on top of the already six years that I'm doing of service. I phrase that weirdly, but I'm doing six primary years of service, but I'll have to do more to repay my debts, um, which is not fun. And they'll keep doing that to you if you ever get in debt, so you're probably going to die here. Um, probably before the age of 42, considering that our lifespans are not too long. But anyway, looking past that, I got assigned to live in the King's Bastion right here. The entire right side of the building is dedicated to soldiers' barracks. And in each room, there's about 24 soldiers. It's not too bad during the nighttime, though, because a third of them are on duty. So in reality, it's more like 16 soldiers per night. But still, that's a considerable amount. And you have no privacy, which I wasn't thrilled about. But I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, in terms of pay, we don't get paid too much. We work 24 hours a day here at the guardhouse, doing things like patrol or post or really anything. They could, could make you chop wood or cut some grass if you really felt like it. But for our day's work, um, and well, a whole week's work, uh, um, we only get a very paltry amount. Uh, after a month, it's one and a half livre, or French pound, uh, which is about enough to pay for a single leather shoe. See, where they got me was the fact that we technically get nine livre, but most of that is garnished. See, we have to pay for our own equipment, our own lodging, our own food. So one and a half is the real spending money we're left with. Maybe if you're lucky, you can save up and buy a barrel of rum or something, or perhaps even a bottle of wine. 
but that's very fancy, and that would take months and months of saving, so we're just going to spend it on the easiest thing, which is rum. Uh, share it amongst ourselves, and of course, almost drink ourselves to death. Our livers aren't really thanking us, but there's no other form of entertainment around here. Of course... Oh! Oh, hi. So if you guys want to follow me over to beside the guardhouse, just line up along the gravel, I'll be shooting my own. Is that what is known as a flintlock? More or less, uh, depending on the language, depending uh, on where it's your from. Marker, don't step on the grass, please, and go to the gravel. If you want to go further on up there, you're still going to get a good picture or whatever, okay? Oh, good idea. Oh, no, no you have to stay there. on the gravel. Okay, so here we go. I've got to wear protection, as a good soldier should. We didn't have these newfangled technologies back in the day, um, but I have earplugs and goggles. It keeps me from uh, being hit by shrapnel in the eyes and keeps me from going deaf from the sound of the gun. Um, we do target practice sometimes, but if you're talking about the 21st century, it's about twice a day. Very well. Okay, first things first, is I'm going to take my cartridge here, I'm going to rip it, and then I'm going to pour it in the pan. So just coat it enough so that when the spark falls, it fires off. Bring it up to my cheek. I'll count down three, two, one, and I'll fire it so you'll be ready when it happens. All right. Three, two, one, fire. There we are. Perfect. Did you miss? <laughs> Oh, ping. He said that when you finish, you want to clean it by. Thank you, everybody, and leave the walk. Woo! while they were on duty, while they were off duty, 
know that they're uniform, the accoutrement, and actually be able to watch a musket being loaded and fired standing in front of the guardhouse. The soldier will do that for you people in just a few seconds. See, ya, they talk, said he see Palmy Wu, he found Paul Sen, and in the end, the wall, he told me he's speaking, I think they showed up. They really kind of near here, they see out of four friends, they really more. The English speaking people, if you want to gather by the guardhouse, and we'll have the uh, soldiers do that for you.